five years and more than $10 billion is the price SpaceX has paid so far for its Starship development project. For any company including SpaceX, that price is too high and SpaceX believes it's time to stop. I mean, they're planning for 2024 to be the year of the big leaps to get the project to break even as quickly as possible. It explains why Flight 3 had bold plans beyond reaching orbit only. But of course, that is just a hot prelude to 2024 because in Flight 4 onwards, there will be many more shocking things waiting for us. SpaceX reveals what's next for Starship Flight 4. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. As you know, Starship flew for the third time, and what a successful flight it was because it achieved what was expected in addition to reaching orbit. Lifted off from Orbital Launch Pad A at 8.25 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Booster 10 with its 33 engines carried Ship 28 from the start until the main engines cut off. B-10 also had the perfect flip and boost backburn after stage separation. Ship 28 continued until the second stage engine cut off and entered into a coast phase. We can see both stages completed excellently. The first goal is the successful ascent burn. What's more, SpaceX was able to complete the payload door test and the cryogenic transfer test, two critical marks for the company's future plans. In spite of being so successful, the test can't avoid the mistakes. In fact, Ship 28 opted not to complete the in-space burn for Raptor due to high roll rates on Ship 28 that could not be corrected. Both Booster 10 and Ship 28 attempted to splash down following the new trajectory but failed. Honestly, that does not matter because according to SpaceX's iteration methodology, Starship does not need to be perfect to fly. Thanks to the flaws during each flight, the SpaceX team can understand more about their goal and opt for a method suitable for the next test. These are repeated until the time the gigantic vehicle actually is reliable. Is it a very clever strategy, right? Of course, a smart plan cannot be fulfilled without a key element, time. The most disadvantage of SpaceX's approach is the tough deadline because the preparation for the next test, testing the rocket and research post-flight usually require a lot of time and even money. So SpaceX found a way to optimize their time, meaning a fast turnaround of Starship. Before Flight 3, the preparation for Flight 4 has been kicked off, typically Ship 29 Spin Prime test. You spin me round, round, baby round, round. Ship 29 with Booster 11 is expected to join the upcoming flight. On March 22, SpaceX tweeted that Flight 4 Starship moved to the pad at Starbase for upcoming static fires. The static fires on S-29 are possible on March 25, 26, and 27, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also, there is possibly another test of a single-engine static fire. A single-engine static fire would most likely be similar to Ship 28's, which was the simulated in space burn. For those who don't know, the ignition of a single Raptor engine demonstrates a flight-like startup for an in-space burn. The in-space burn of Starship's Raptor engine refers to the firing of the Raptor engine when the Starship spacecraft is already in space. This burn is typically performed to adjust the spacecraft's trajectory, change its velocity, or perform other maneuvers necessary for its mission objectives. In space, burns are critical for missions such as orbital insertion, orbital maneuvers, trajectory corrections, and departure burns. These burns require precise control of the engine to ensure the spacecraft reaches its intended destination or performs its planned maneuvers accurately. During that progress, the rocket typically fires just one Raptor engine for in space, burns to optimize efficiency and conserve fuel. While Starship is designed to have multiple Raptor engines, both sea level and vacuum optimized versions for thrust during launch and atmospheric flight using just one engine for in space maneuvers offer several advantages. Efficiency, firing a single engine reduces fuel consumption compared to igniting multiple engines. By using just one engine, SpaceX can achieve the required delta V meaning change in velocity while minimizing fuel usage. Simplicity, operating just one engine, simplifies the control and management of the burn. It reduces the complexity of coordinating multiple engines and their thrust levels. 
making the maneuver easier to execute. Reliability, operating a single engine, reduces the chances of complications or failures during the burn. With fewer components involved, there is less risk of technical issues that could jeopardize the mission. The Raptor engine's design and performance characteristics make it well-suited for these in-space maneuvers, contributing to the overall capabilities of the Starship spacecraft. One important character contributing to the successful missions on Ship 29 is Booster 11. The Super Heavy has been on the right side of Megabay since November 20. It quietly experienced its cryogenic proof testing and should be ready for static fire testing as soon as the orbital launch mount is once again ready for testing. Currently, OLM is being refurbished with the recent upgrade which is installing alignment pins. Significant damage on the main liquid oxygen and liquid methane cryogenic hoses was revealed. These must be repaired or replaced before any testing can occur on the OLM. It's safe to say that refurbishment seems to be going very fast and the date we see Booster 11 put on the launch pad for static fire will not be far away, maybe early next month. Who knows? When will the Flight 4 hardware be ready to fly? Several speculations emerged. April is considered a very optimistic target when SpaceX is still in the process of collecting data and the FAA needs time for the mishap investigation prior to amending the launch license. During the satellite conference, SpaceX's chief operating officer, Gwyn Shotwell, gave the more reasonable option about six weeks from Flight 3. Six weeks is the suitable period for upgrades on the Starship rocket. These improvements help the vehicle more reliably in its flight test, thus giving it access to the goal that its predecessor missed and more. Most likely, the plans for Flight 4 would include being better control of the Super Heavy booster on the descent, securing heat shield tiles, and eliminating roll issues on Starship during orbital operations and re-entry. Besides that, Shotwell highlighted that Flight 4 would not have satellites on board. Things are still in trade, but I think we're really going to focus on getting re-entry right and making sure we can land these things where we want to land them. She explained, Also in the conference, Gwyn Shotwell stated that the goals for the Starship program this year are to reach orbit, deploy satellites, and recover both stages. Flight 3 marked the first victory, reaching orbital velocity. So what about the other two? When exactly will Starship have Starlink as the payload? We have no idea, but I'm pretty sure that once it can do that, SpaceX could start making money from Starship. Imagine how crazy their cost to conduct business would be massively reduced if a Starship could get 100 tons of Starlinks into LEO. Roughly two-thirds of SpaceX's launches in 2023 were devoted to building out Starlink, the company's satellite internet mega constellation. That trend will likely continue in 2024, for the network is nowhere near complete. Starlink currently consists of about 5,230 operational spacecraft, according to astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell. But SpaceX has permission to deploy a total of 12,000 Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit, and the company has applied for approval for another 30,000 on top of that. In this case, Starship clearly can take SpaceX much closer to its goal than ever. Thanks to that, the launch cadence of Falcon 9 would wind down as well. SpaceX vice presidents in the past have said explicitly that the goal with Starship is to cannibalize their own Falcon 9 launches. Before that, however, SpaceX needs to learn how to recover both stages of Starship. It remains unclear whether recovery in this context means a catch or just a successful landing. Talking about this target, some supposed that makes sense, but I always think that if they have a controlled descent from a booster on Flight 4, they might try and catch it on Flight 5. Big risk if it hits Stage 0 at the transonic speed, it would make a mess, but they like taking risks. On the other hand, some said, To me, it doesn't make sense to risk a catch until they have practiced both a successful booster touchdown and the full Starship landing procedure over water. Until they know they can actually fly and land the thing, I think they will want to launch as frequently as possible and therefore not risk having to rebuild Stage Zero. So, how about you? When do you think SpaceX will begin catching Starship? Let me know in the comments. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you.
Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.